there are a lot of ways to automate things inside Home Assistant, for example, your door or motion sensors. If something is triggered in automation, then you have a condition and then you call a service and do something with that, either opening of the door or motion in your apartment. But as always, Home Assistant has a bunch of ways on how you can do that. Today we will be looking at the Entity Controller. We'll start in a couple of seconds. It's always nice to find gems inside Hacks or Home Assistant Community Store. And today we will be looking at this Entity Controller by Danobot. I hope I got your name right. Thank you Danobot for this great Hacks integration. But what actually is Entity Controller? If you, as I mentioned already in the intro, have a motion sensor or door window sensor, it can get tripped or triggered. Then you have an event that something has tripped or triggered it. You use that trigger inside your automations and you control other devices. For example, if you have motion, then you control the light. But it's actually not that simple always. For example, let's say that you have outside porch light that is usually off. You have motion sensor on your porch and if anybody approaches it, it turns the light on. When the timer runs out, that same light will be turned off. But what if, for example, you have turned on the porch light and the motion is detected and the light is triggered, which actually doesn't change the state of the light because light was already on, but after timer runs out, the light turns off then you have to manually once again trigger it to state on. Sure, you can create conditions and see if the light is already on or off, but it all complicates our usual or everyday tasks. So this is where the entity controller comes. Entity controller can change the state of one device, but also monitor the same device to see if it has already been triggered, if it's already been manually set to one condition, then ignore it. But we will go through details when we do the installation. Let's check first the GitHub repository. The documentation for this integration is very well written. And if you go on the documentation page, you will have a lot of things to read. Get some ideas, basic configurations, some ticks and trips, etc. Let's get started with the installation. In Home Assistant, go to your Hacks, Integrations, click on Explore and Download Repositories and type Entity and select Entity Controller. Click on Download and Download. At the time of the recording, the version is 9.6.1. Since this is a Hacks integration, the next step for us, of course, is to restart our Home Assistant. After Home Assistant has restarted, go to your preferred choice of editing YAML files. And yes, unfortunately, we do have to use YAML files here. In my case, this is a Studio Code. And inside your configuration YAML file, type following Entity Controller, this will activate our Hex integration, then give it a name, for example, door light. For me, this means that I will be using this door window sensor to trigger entities. And by the way, a link to this very cheap door window sensor, Zigbee sensor, will be down in the video description. Next, you have to specify sensor that will be used by this entity controller. Sensor can be, as I mentioned already, either motion sensor or, for example, door window sensor. In my case, this will be binary sensor called fake door. Next, we need to specify entity that we want to control. Entity, light, dot. Let's select this stream desk light. This is the WLED strip on my desk. And the most simple configuration would be to add delay. Delay is measured in seconds. And it is used as a timer to trigger the device back into the previous state. So for example, if the light was off, I open the door, light turns on for delay period of time. Let's put here three just for the purpose of this video. And the basic configuration is done. Once again, I will quickly restart my Home Assistant for the configuration to take effect. Here is our fake door sensor. As you can see, it is instantly triggered. When the door is open, we get the open state. When the door is closed, we get the closed state. Let's add a couple of entities here so we can see what happens with each one of them. I've added the light that we are controlling with this door window sensor. Click on Add, Entity, and we name this event controller door slash light. Let's add entity controller dot light and we can see the state here. 
click on save. For example, if I open the door, it will trigger it once. And because of that, the light will turn on and the timer will start. As you can see, the door is still open, but the lights are off and the timer has returned back to idle state. If I close it, nothing happens. This, of course, can be used together with motion sensors, door window sensors, locks, etc. But as you've seen in this case, when the timer has run out, when the door was closed, nothing happened. There is a way to work around that. For example, motion sensors can have a long activated state which is a bad thing. Motion sensors should report motion when it sees motion and after the motion is activated, it should turn to off state. There is a workaround for that. If we add one more line to our configuration, sensor type duration, it now knows that our sensor will emit on and off, or in our case, open or close state. With this added line, there are changes on how this sensor or entity controller is working. For example, if we open the door, the timer will run, but it will not stop running because our fake door is still open and the light will be on. If we close it, the state of the controller will go to idle and the light will turn off. But if we quickly open and close it, it will wait for timer to run out to turn the light off. But that's not all. If I turn the light manually on and I open, you see that our controller is in the blocked state. So even if I close and open the door constantly, it will not change the state of the light as it is already been turned on manually. But if you think that this is all, it actually is not. It's just the tip of the iceberg. I will show you just a couple of examples for all the actions and all the things that you can do with this integration. I really do suggest that you check the documentation out. Let's add time constraints. We have our sensor entity delay, sensor type duration. We can add start and end time start and end time can be exact time or you can use relative time for example don't use both of them at the same time you can either use the fixed time and date or a relative time and date in this case as i mentioned between 10 36 and 10 39 it will work and in this lower case sunset plus 15 minutes will be start time and end time will be sunrise minus 45 minutes meaning 45 minutes before the sun rises let me remove those duplicate keys and once again restart home assistant with start and end time, we have same behavior as previously, open, close, open, close. And this of course will only work if the device is activated between those start and end times. Since we are currently not in the time range, we have constrained state. Opening and closing the door or activating the motion sensor will do nothing and nothing will change. Let me quickly look at one last example because this awesome integration has much, much more. In this case, I've added a couple of things. I've added service data that controls the brightness of the light we have specified here, light entity. Then we have night mode. In the night mode, you can change part of the settings. For example, in this case, night mode will only start between 10.43 and 10.49. The brightness will be lower to 30%. And let's, for example, say that the delay will be four seconds. You can have brighter or dimmer light depending on the time of the day, and you can have longer or shorter delays. Let me quickly restart Home Assistant. Since we are currently in the night mode, the light will not be as bright as during the day. And it will take 4 seconds, not 3 seconds, before the light turns off. But this is, as I've mentioned, just the tip of the iceberg. There are tons of other options that you can use with this entity controller. So I suggest that you go and see advanced configuration, basic configuration, and of course, getting started. I really do hope that you did find this video useful. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with those crazy YouTube algorithms. And let's not forget all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.